Hi, Messianic Michael back with you and today uh, we're out on Lake Lanier to demonstrate some precision trolling techniques. Uh, we've used these techniques effectively uh, everywhere from Lake Erie to catch walleye, Lake Leesville in Ohio to catch uh, muscalunge. Uh, we've caught trout on the mountain reservoirs of Colorado and North Carolina and here uh, we're on Lake Lanier, Georgia because uh, this time of year, striped bass and spotted bass tend to suspend a little bit in open water so that they can be targeted in Lake Lanier. It's uh, cool and clear, so it's a pretty good candidate for these uh, precision trolling techniques. But before we get into those details, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We thank you for the boat and for the equipment. We thank you for getting us here safely, and we thank you that we have enough time uh, to go fishing. Lord God, give us wisdom as we fish today. Help us to be a blessing on the water to anybody we might meet. Help us to be safe. Uh, help the motors to work. Help all the equipment to work. And Lord God, we you get increase our skill and our wisdom and help us to catch some fish today. Uh, some striped bass and some spotted bass, maybe some largemouth bass as well. We uh, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the key equipment in precision trolling is a combination of line counter reels and this is a, a Daiwa sea line uh, and it's you can see it's got the little line counter on it so uh, we've also got an Okuma convector a couple of those that we use and lots of different ways to get the uh, lures at depth but we prefer what's called a dipsy diver diving planers or walker deeper divers some of them are and these are effective because there are charts uh, that you can estimate how much line you need out for giving diner, diving planer uh, to reach a given depth. So you try and find uh, what depth the fish are running on your fish finder. Uh, look on the chart, let that much line out. And that's usually a pretty good rough estimate of how deep the lures will be running. Uh, but you want to fine tune that uh, when you're when your sonar tells you you're in a little shallower water, like uh, once in a while your lures will bump the bottom. So uh, correlating at what depth your lures bump the bottom uh, helps you refine and then uh, get a little more specific information for your specific lures and your specific setup, uh, how deep your lures are running for a, little, for a certain amount of line out. So for, so for example, if the chart said you need 50 uh, feet of line out with, uh, with the big uh, dipsy diver up there to be 20 feet down and uh, you know if you're hitting bottom at 25 feet deep with 50 feet of line out you know you're running a little deeper and vice versa so you can make those fine adjustments. Now lots of different lures are possible to run behind the diving planers. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, good success this year with uh, what's called a Michigan Stinger Spoon and that one's been hand painted with a little nail polish but it's still pretty effective. You can also run uh, certain crankbaits that don't have too much drag behind the diving planers and you can see that's another Michigan Stinger Spoon hanging behind that rod. So you want to uh, figure out how to adjust your motors so you've got a forward speed of about uh, two miles an hour and really the window from one and a half miles an hour to two and a half miles an hour is uh, pretty good. Sometimes you'll figure out that you're catching more fish at two and a half miles an hour or catching more fish closer to one and a half miles an hour uh, but two is usually our target forward speed when we're trolling. Okay we're trolling along here at about two miles an hour. Uh, that rod is in a down east rod holder up front and the rods in front we like to run with the larger dipsy divers pulling uh, str as strong as possible out to the side. So uh, this is a closer look at the, the dipsy diver and you can see you can set them either left or right so depending on which side you're running them on they need to be set properly with the L or the R and you can see this one's set all the way to R3 so uh, the one out there on the right side of the boat is pulling as hard as possible to the right and the chart tells us that the 50 feet of line out when it's set uh, like that far right uh, we'll put it about 20 feet deep. Uh, you want to take a lot of care to keep the right ones on the right and the left ones on the left uh, otherwise they tend to get tangled up a little bit 
and you spend uh, way too much time untangling and not enough time fishing. So the smaller ones, they don't pull as hard. So these smaller ones here, uh, if you set them uh, to say three right or three left, uh, you need about 100 feet of line out for those to be uh, approximately 20 feet deep. And that's our target today, 20 feet deep, because that's where we've been marking most of the fish. Uh, there'll be times a year when the fish are more like 10 feet deep, and there'll be times a year when they're closer to 25 or 30 feet deep. So you just adjust the depths uh, you're running the lures accordingly. Now another uh, important accessory is the contour map and we just looked this one up online and we printed it out and it shows uh, how deep the water is at various points and we use this to try and avoid uh, you know sudden humps where the water gets shallow all of a sudden. We also use the contour map if we're marking most of the fish they might say be 20 feet deep and 40 to 50 feet of water uh, we try and avoid the shallower water. We don't want to be trolling in uh, 30 feet of water. Most of the fish are in 40 to 50 feet of water. You know, nor do we want to be spending too much time over the main creek and river channels, which might be more like uh, 70 to 100 feet deep if most of the fish are closer to the ledges, uh, like 40 or 50 feet deep. So uh, those are a lot of the factors that are important because uh, trolling has the advantage. You can fish four lures out at a time but you want to keep the lures uh, close to where the fish are for as much of the time as possible. Now I'm running four lures out at a time, uh, just trolling around here by myself. With a buddy or two in the boat, uh, we can run uh, six lures out at a time. So, thank you Jesus. Uh, we can see that the precision trolling technique works. Uh, this is a nice uh, spotted bass. Praise Jesus. All right, so let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of uh, this precision trolling technique. Uh, one of the advantages is that you can put the lures down deeper and catch fish closer to the middle of the day. Uh, you can see it's about 12, 12.30 right now. Uh, we've caught uh, two nice spotted bass so far. Uh, it's not that fish stop biting in the middle of the day, is that they just go a little deeper. So by running the uh, lures deeper for suspended fish, you can keep catching them. Uh, you know, after your, your morning techniques in shallower water uh, tend to peter out a little bit. Some other advantages is for people who can't cast a lot due to physical injuries, um, it can be a pretty viable, uh, powerful, useful technique. Uh, it can be useful for maybe children or women who uh, just might not be that uh, talented with some of the fine cast and retrieve type of techniques that uh, are useful in other kinds of fishing. Uh, it can be useful for uh, children who might not be able to, how shall we say, uh, eliminate the boat noise. Uh, the lures are running between 50 and 100, sometimes 150 feet behind the boat. So the fishing technique is just not as sensitive uh, to boat noise as a lot of other freshwater fishing techniques might be. Lake Lanier, Georgia. Beautiful lake, clear, very nice. Uh, trolling is a good technique because fish can see uh, the lures, the baits from a good distance away and come and get them. Uh, in a lake with uh, high fishing pressure, uh, lots of people around, heavy boat traffic, uh, you kind of need to take a different approach from what everybody else is doing. Uh, trolling uh, has a success rate for us of about one fish an hour uh, in the boat, so it's productive. Lake Lanier is kind of hard to fish, and uh, you know, maybe guides and stuff put two, five, ten fish in the boat every hour, but uh, as an enthusiastic amateur, I'm, I learned to be content with one fish an hour, and uh, my kids and fishing buddies are also content with about that uh, catch rate. It's also it's a relaxing approach. Uh, you're not casting all the time. Uh, you're not uh, rebaiting live bait all the time. You don't have the expense of uh, you know buying the blue back herring. You're 
after your hands don't end up by smelling like earthworms or blue back herring or whatever it is you might be using, uh, we like precision trolling on Lake Lanier.